Uh, next, we have Matsya with uh, Bezel building an iOS app with a lot of frameworks. Hello, everyone. My name is Maciej Piotrowski, and I work at Allegro. Uh, I am a mobile software developer. And at Allegro, I work for a mobile core team, which is a platform team. And we take care of the entire build process uh, of an application. We take care of uh, uh, technical depth. Uh, and we also build uh, in-house tools for developers. Uh, to begin with, let me tell you what Allegro actually is. We are an e-commerce application. Um, we are uh, our biggest user base is based in Poland, but we also entered a Czech market. The user base can be counted in millions for mobile applications, and uh, for such a huge user base, you might expect a complicated code base, and it actually is like that. Uh, we use mono repository, and there are some statistics over the five years uh, period of time. Our uh, source uh, lines of code grew uh, for over one million. We uh, gained new modules from uh, thirty to three hundred thirty, and we've been using uh, two languages for development of an application which are Objective-C and Swift. In the beginning, we had more Objective-C. Now we have uh, more Swift than Objective-C. But in 2019, uh, we discovered that our builds uh, take a long time. And these metrics come from Intel-based machines. These are uh, six core CPUs. Uh, and we were able to uh, make the build times uh, lower uh, by using Bazel as a uh, caching system. So uh, <laughs> back in 2019 and 2020, uh, there was no possibility to easily build a mixed source frameworks. We've been using Swift and Objective-C and we were able to cache mixed source frameworks when it wasn't trendy and possible. And this quick story will be about how we've been able to do so. Uh, before we started introducing Bazel as our build system and caching system, we had to perform a cleanup in our mono repository. Uh, so modules in the repository were unstructured. We had to unify the structure uh, the configuration was in project files. We had to extract it, and project files were checked in to the repository, which, is, which was kind of a mess. So uh, after the cleanup, we unified the structure so that modules were located under the modules directory. Every module had a sources directory, test directory, uh, configuration directory. Uh, and we extracted configuration settings from project files to XC config files. We removed Xcode projects. We generate them from manifests, uh, and we use for that uh, Xcode gen tool. Uh, but we still had Swift and Objective-C. Uh, so we created our command line interface, which is our in-house developed uh, tool. Thanks for uh, thanks God for Swift argument parser, which is a standard Apple library for writing command line tools. And it allowed us to provide a few commands for users to work with our workspace, with our projects. So uh, we had a command that uh, generate command that allows us to uh, generate a new module based on a template. We can also generate a project file for a module. We can also uh, dump dependencies from Bazel build file to manifest file so that these two are in sync. And our CLI serves as a bridge between uh, Xcode build, which is a standard um, command line tool that Xcode standard IDE from Apple uses to build mobile applications for iOS. Uh, and CLI also serves as a bridge to Bazel so that we could kick off Bazel builds uh, by using our CLI. 
Uh, there's one additional command in our CLI, it's called focus. Uh, we use that command to manipulate on the workspace uh, that a uh, user works with when developing a feature. So whenever somebody wanted to work on a feature A and B, they call focus command and uh, these uh, corresponding projects get uh, into the workspace. And we also add over there every project that depends on these two modules. Our CLI also generates a file from which we would know what Bazel targets to build and which uh, locations to copy from the uh, binaries that get built. By default, our workspace contains only uh, two projects, the application projects and the Bazel dependencies projects. The Bazel dependencies uh, target that is located in the project uh, gets built before every other target gets built. And this project, uh, this project has two run phases. Uh, they are called run Bazel and copy frameworks. And the run Bazel framework, uh, the run Bazel script in a very simplified version is uh, like that. We just read the targets that are going to be built by Bazel. And this file was prepared by our CLI by using focus command. And we use our bridge, our CLI, to kick off a uh, Bazel build. Uh, we pass the modules to be built, some configuration files, and other settings. Then after uh, every module requested gets built, we copy frameworks from Bazel bin directory to derived data directory, which is a standard directory under which, uh, in which Xcode searches for frameworks to be linked. And we also have some build files. So every module has uh, a simple build file that uses our module macro. Uh, it has a name and a set of dependencies. And the implementation of a macro and an, uh, and an underlying rule uh, extracts some stuff from context, such as the name of a project and the scheme to be built. Uh, we also create a list of dependencies and transitive dependencies from which we create a config setting called framework search paths. And this config setting tells Xcode where to uh, find the binary of a framework. Uh, we define some inputs such as sources, uh, such as Xcode version uh, with which with the binary should be built. And we define uh, an empty uh, output, and this will be the location in which the binary will be available after the build process. Uh, and we use an action. We run uh, a command with our CLI tool. The command is called build. And we supply the command with the following arguments. We provide a project path. Uh, and a scheme name, which is a module name to be built from that project, a set of other parameters, but also an output parameter, which will be used by uh, our CLI to define uh, a location under which the build framework should be put. And this is, of course, in Bazel bin. So to sum up, uh, the build process is a bit complicated, but it starts in Xcode. We run Bazel script that calls our uh, CLI build, Bazel build command. Then Bazel build uh, gets kicked off. Then Bazel uh, calls our CLI build command, CLI build command. And then our CLI calls Xcode build, which does the actual build of the binary. And then when all modules get built, uh, we copy the frameworks to the standard Xcode location, derived data, and then the build continues in Xcode. Of course, this approach has a few pros and cons. Uh, one of the pros is that we have a CLI bridge that is suited for our uh, modules. 
uh, we were able to use Xcode build and uh, to, to build mixed source framework. Uh, yeah, it uh, gives some overhead around 10 seconds for copying. And this is a non-standard approach, so we can't benefit from standard rule set. Thank you very much.